got it. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Cool. Hi. Well, um, first off, thank you everyone for listening in. I'm super stoked for this week's episode of the Plan to Your Friends podcast. I have the lovely, talented, amazing, like you can name all these different things, but lovely and talented, <laughs> uh, Brooke from Reverie and Sparko. Hey. Hi, how are you? I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh. I, for, well, I am thankful for you being on this podcast first and foremost. I think you were the perfect guest to ask because we've been working pretty hand in hand this summer over you know, some things that you do on your end. And um, I just wanted everyone to know just how ma- amazing you are and, um, you know, yeah. get, let people know a little bit more about you, right? Because I think uh, you're on the East Coast, I'm on the West Coast. I think we all need to like find who each other are. And uh, yeah, anyways, I'm super stoked. But um, I guess to start off with, you know, um, can you give me a little bit of background about what you do and maybe just a little um, tidbit of that? Yeah. So, um, well, one, I want to point out, cause you mentioned you're on West and I'm on East. I love the internet. I think it's so crazy. Like the fact that we met and worked together and have continued to friendship, like not ever meeting in person or being in the same, same state. Like I love social media, but, oh, um, it. so <laughs> my name is Brooke. Um, I'm a mindful branding and web designer and founder of Reverie Inspired Co, which is my branding and web design business. Um, so that I like is in a nutshell what I do. I got into it. My degree from college is actually in public relations, um, which I know has nothing to do with branding and web design, but I took a graphic design course my senior semester, like my last semester or second to last in, uh, in college, fell completely in love with it, loved the graphic design, loved the web design and was like, absolutely not. I'm not starting over on my degree because that would have involved me like switching to another college, like within my university, I was like, nope, Mm -hmm. it is what it is. I'm going to have a PR degree, but I continued loving graphic design, graphic design and web design and continued practicing it on the side. And like, I would take clients here and there on the side of my corporate job, um, for a couple of years before I decided like, no, like I really, really like this. I want to do it full time. I want to work for myself. I can't spend another day in a corporate job. I was so Mm -hmm. miserable. So in April of 2021, I quit that job and haven't looked back. It's been so fun. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> well, I, first off, that is a crazy journey of, you know, going to college and working in that industry for a bit, but also doing your, your side hustle, which is now your full-time hustle um, and being able to actually turn your passion into something that you can do full, do full time is not something that a lot of people can say they do. So I just want to congratulate yes. you first and foremost, because um, that you. was this year. Yeah. <laughs> this year, this is on you. And hey, you're next. I, the fact you do so much on the top of your corporate job, it's, it, it truly mind blows. It's mind blowing to me because live long and plant has been so successful. And I just, I don't know where I need the time of day that you have because you are so efficient. <laughs> oh, I, I have a visitor. Oh, hi kitty. Um, I think it's all about, um, prioritizing and organizing your schedule to kind of fit what works best for you and moving those things on your to-do list that continue to maybe get pushed down. And then, you know, just, just finding different ways to um, like on my to-do list, I'll highlight certain things that I have to do each day and needs to get done that day. And then I actually rip my to-do list off and redo it every day. I think that's maybe where people get um, in my opinion, where people kind of get bogged down is that they see this to-do list, which it's great to check off boxes or cross things off, but they continue it on that same paper. And at least for me, visually, I have to kind of rip the paper off from the day before, write out everything again. And then that's how I mentally can get over that hurdle of like, oh my gosh, there's so much there's so to much. do. Yeah. That's a really good point. Cause I feel like if not, I'm the person that will continue the same to <sighs> Sometimes I continue the same to do this. Sometimes I start a new one, but I feel like that initial, I do like a mixture, um, but that initial list continues to build and becomes so long. And even if a lot of it's checked off, you're still looking at the daunting list of 30 tasks. So yeah. that's, that's a really good piece of advice, actually. Yeah. Anytime. I, it's, mm-hmm. it's always nice to find different ways of, or, you know, tasks uh, to get done for the rest of the day. So anytime. <laughs> 100%. When did you decide that you really wanted to do this full time? Like what kind of made you jump into that? So for me, I've known that I wanted to work for myself 
for a long time now. It was actually, I remember the night it was, I was in college. I was like laying in bed. It was three o'clock. It was literally like three o'clock in the morning. And I was scrolling on Facebook. Um, and I just somehow came across these girls who did not necessarily what I do. They're not like web designers, but like they lived a nomadic life and just worked from their laptops. Like they did, oh, one of them was social media, a social media strategist, I want to say, and the other was a copywriter and, but not just web copy, but just like a freelance writer in general. Mm -hmm. And, but they lived this crazy life of like, they traveled the world. They would do like one, two month leases in like Mexico and then Bali and they just worked on their laptop. And I was like, I want that. I want to be able to take my laptop and go. And I still have not achieved the nomadic life just because uh, I am married and my husband, uh, we haven't found a way from him to work from his laptop yet, but TBD. <laughs> um, so we are, we're stationary. We don't, I'm not, I don't live the nomadic life, but I knew that I wanted the freedom to be able to do whatever and work for myself. And that scared the heck out of me. So, which is why it took me as long as it did to finally do it, I think. Um, and I'm also really creative. I'm multi-passionate. I have a lot of passions all of them pertaining to creativity, but like my first creative love is actually makeup, um, which has nothing to do with web design, but I love them both. And I still find ways to have both of them in my life. Um, so for me, I always knew like, I wanted to create, I wanted to create for myself and I wanted to have my own business, but it really scared me. So I did what, what, what you're supposed to do. Went to college, got the degree, moved to New York city, got a corporate job and lo and behold, didn't like it, got a different job, didn't like it, got a third, got another one, like didn't like it. And I kind of had this moment in 2020 um, where I realized that I was the only common denominator in all of those jobs that I didn't like. And that's not me putting myself down or saying I'm the problem, but it's me, well, it was me like taking responsibility for saying like, look, yes, the situation you ended up in in all of those jobs was super shitty and like, you weren't treated well necessarily like that's all valid and I all the emotions I thought that are valid but I was like at the end of the day you're the common denominator here and I don't think any corporate job no matter how incredible it is is going to keep you happy long term because I would always love it for like six months maybe even up to a year and then I was miserable and thought my world was ending because I couldn't stand to go there another day and I was like you're the common denominator here so you're the only person that can change that and I just really had that moment in 2020 where the last straw was pulled on being treated unfairly at a corporate job. And I was just like, no, now's the time I need to figure it out there. If there's any time in my life to take a risk mm -hmm. and quit my corp, like quit my stable income to try to go out on my own. It's now my husband and I, like, we don't have kids. We have cats. They're essentially <laughs> our kids, but like we have two of them. Um, <laughs> but we don't have kids. So I was like, if there's any time for me to just like try something and see if it works, it's now. That's so. amazing. I love that you bring up the point of you are the common denominator. I, I've never yeah. heard it put that way. So it's, yeah. it's really impactful. And it almost gives you like an empowering feeling, I guess, of, yeah. you know, you are in charge of your own destiny. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, you only have this moment now. And so you might as well yeah. make the most of it. So I love that. And yeah. And, and I don't want it to sound like to anyone, like if you're watching this and you're in the position where you're wanting to do something for yourself, but you're scared too. Like it was not an easy moment for me to out loud, say the words, I am the common denominator here because it feels like you're putting the fault on yourself, but you're not, you're just waking up and you're realizing like, it's not my fault that I was treated the way I was treated at these jobs, but it is my fault. If I continue to put myself in those situations and you are kind of, like you said, you're the only one in control of yourself. So like, it's up to you to make those changes and it's not easy. It's not overnight. Um, I don't think anyone is truly an overnight success. I think there's just a lot of back end stuff that you don't get to see. Um, but it, it was scary for me to admit in the moment, because when I admitted it to myself the first time that I was the common denominator, it felt like it was me. That was the problem mm. because that's the mindset I had about it. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's easier and it feels better to blame it on the job and say, oh, well, they treated mm. me shitty. Oh, well, I was overworked and underpaid. Oh, well, I was this. And all of those might be true but you still have to admit that you're the one that continually ends up unhappy. And that's not a poor reflection of you. If anything, that just means you want more for yourself. I love that. I'm definitely going to use that. I'm going to take that away. Um, and <laughs> use it I own. say it all the time, run with it. <laughs> yeah. That's a great philosophy to have. Do you find that as you're working with different clients, that is, that's pretty much like the common denominator that you find 
is reflective amongst all your clients is that they've been able to take their like empower themselves to to bring together some kind of business that they run or coaching um I know this isn't like super random but like yeah with the clients that you work with do you find a common um like theme or personality type I guess I guess it kind of runs along the lines of this yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. Um, yes and no. I've worked with so many different clients in so many different like industries. Like you're in the plant world. I've worked with people in the food world. I've worked with people in the like nutrition world, fitness world. So like I've had the pleasure and the joy of being able to work with people in different spaces. However, you are right. They all have, all of you, I would say, including myself, have a common denominator. And I think it's the common denominator that makes you an entrepreneur. It's you take all of your past learned experiences because as much as I as much as I wish I'd have done this sooner, quit my job sooner, I'd be even farther along than I am now. Like, sure, I wish that, but I also don't because all of those past experiences I've had have taught me what I, what I know now. And I apply that in my own business. So like uh, nothing, I don't want anything in my past to change. Even if like logically, I'm like, of course I wish I'd have done this sooner. At the end of the day, like, no, because I learned something from all of those situations. And I think that that's a common denominator that I see in everyone. So like even Mm -hmm just everyone I worked with, like anytime I'll talk to them about like why they started their business. One of the Mm -hmm. questions that I ask everyone in my branding questionnaire, and you know this because you filled it out yourself was, (laughs) what's your story? How did you get to where you are today? Why are you relatable to other people and what you do? And I think it's because we all have a story. And I think everyone's story in some way, shape or form, like it's all, everyone's is different, Mm -hmm. but also everyone's is very similar. Not everyone, but a lot of people have very similar ones. And the fact that they were unhappy with where they were and they woke up one day and decided like, I can create something for myself and whether Mm -hmm. the person people I've worked with are at the point where they have quit and they're full-time in their business, or it's still a side hustle. If it's whatever it is. Um, I think there has been the common thread of just like ambition and wanting more. Mm, I love that. I, I definitely like agree with those sentiments. I think that, you know, all small business owners or, you know, any kind of business owner, they have that, that drive to like mm-hmm. want to do more and want to do better for themselves, but maybe also for their community or in their yeah. industry or whatever. Um, Absolutely. Whatever yeah. <laughs> um, I know we like just like jumped into, you know, more <laughs> philosophy things. I want to take it a step back and like, I'd love to learn more about why you chose branding. Cause I think that, oh, I remember when I came to you and Lisa, I was like, I don't do creative stuff. Like you guys can mm-hmm. help me figure it out and put word, put my thoughts to paper. And so mm-hmm. I, I think that's like the magic sauce that you have, at least in my first experience that we mm-hmm. um, interacted with. Like, um, yeah, just walk me through like how you got to this Vibrating. point. Yeah. Thank you. Um, honestly, because of what you just said, I, <laughs> First and foremost, I've always been creative. Makeup, makeup may have been my first creative love, but in college is where I found like graphic and branding and web and all of that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, everything that I like to do, like all of my hobbies, I love makeup. I love branding and web design. I like to paint. That's something that I'll never monetize. And it's like personal to me because I'm not an artist, but I love <laughs> painting. But the common denominator for me is I just like to create things. And branding and web design, what's so cool to me is... I'm also really, really, really into mindfulness. I love manifestation. I can talk to you literally all day. Like I like to meditate, I like to journal. I love personal development. Like I genuinely enjoy that genre of books. Some people are going to be weird for that. Um, and for me, I also just really love humans. I really love talking to people. I love, I love getting to know people. I'm definitely an extrovert. And I, for me, it's really fun to be a part of someone's journey. And I find that I'm the most helpful when it comes to creative stuff, because listening to you talk, everything I executed on your website was all things that I picked up in the word you used when you talked to me. Mm -hmm. It was all stuff that like, maybe you didn't see it in your head the exact same way I ended up executing it. But like, it was all stuff that I firmly believe you kind of had in your head based off the conversations we had. And I was able to pick up on your personality and your vibe and the stuff, the website that you already had and the graphics that you make. And just like, the enthusiasm in which you show up on your platforms. Like I was able to then take that and turn it into a brand. So like, for me, it's really fun to be a part of someone's journey and take what they have in their head and make it a reality. Like that's mm. just, that's why I chose branding and why I chose web design. Cause it was a way for me to be able to get to know people 
and be impactful to them and be a part of their journey. It's a small part of their journey because at the end of the day, like live long and plant is your business. All of your success is because of all the hard work that you put in, but being able to be like a little blimp on your radar of like getting to know you and getting to design for you based off of like things that you love and turning it into something you wanted is what's so fun for me. I don't know if that, that, that was kind of a roundabout answer, but that is why, like just getting to know humans and mm -hmm. being a part of their journey. And I think, and the reason I brought up personal development on that too, is like, I really love personal development and motivation. And like, I have, was the person who was working a corporate job just because that's what you're supposed to do. And mm -hmm. I was really miserable in it. And I, if I could be the person that like motivates or inspires someone to leave something that they feel so shitty in and start something they're truly passionate about. Like if I can do that for one person, that would make my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think that, you know, um, going back to like the journey of you really connecting with people. It's so true. I think the power of human connection is magical. And I think that's mm -hmm. something that we've all kind of lost maybe during mm -hmm. either lost during COVID or honestly, maybe like built up our skills during COVID right. because I'll make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like there are some, the in-person interactions that we kind of lose, but right. it almost, you have to have like more of an effort to stay in touch with people now and 100%. yeah. And learn even different ways of communicating, whether that's through phone or through zoom or through text and mm -hmm. having more meaningful conversations as opposed to like, hi, bye. Like, How's um, the weather? Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I love that. And you're so right. Like everything that you put on my website was something that I, I did verbalize to you. And the questionnaires mm -hmm. were helpful, but again, I'm horrible at putting stuff to paper. <laughs> and so it was definitely those like interactions, the voice memos, like <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> random one yeah. off that yeah. um, it totally shined through. So I love the process that you have with that. Thank yeah. you. No, it's, it's important to me to get to know the person. I, I always say like, I love doing that. some people like as designers, some of us love to do discovery calls with clients and some of them don't, which I think is so fine. Everyone has their own processes and that's what makes the world go around. We're all different. But for me, the discovery call portion of working together is so important because I need to know that I can divide with this person. And like, yeah. cause we're working together, as you can say, like we work together for eight to 10 weeks. It's, it's yeah. like a, it's a process and we're talking all the time. So like, you need to make sure you like each other. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. If I didn't like you, I probably would have told you on our first call. <laughs> yeah. And, and, I, and if I didn't like you, I would have not accepted the project. Like that would have, that, that's the reality of it because I couldn't imagine not having a good relationship with someone that I'm about to go talk to. And like, I'm, you're supposed to, for me, like my goal is to create a space where you're comfortable enough to open up to me so I can add those hidden gems about you on your website. If we didn't have a good relationship, then your website would reflect that. And Definitely. I firmly believe that human connection is like unmatched in my opinion. Oh, for sure. I, I study um, communications in college and interpersonal communication. And so the one-on-one -on -one is so important to me. And I think it's mm -hmm. something that like we as a society are lacking nowadays because we don't have these these like yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's like a blessing and a curse right like you can do pretty much everything from your your phone but at the same time you kind of silo yourself off into this little bubble of like here's my tech bubble and I'm not going to talk to anybody else and when I do have to talk to somebody it's really awkward <laughs> or it's via text and chat and instead yeah. of like that I love voice memos. And what's so funny is anytime I'm messaging someone on Instagram, when the conversation first starts, I probably told you this too. I'm like, sorry, if the voice, me voice memos are annoying to me. If they are, <laughs> let me know. But like, to me, I like to hear your voice. Cause I can hear the inflection in your voice. Like it's just way more meaningful in my opinion. Oh, definitely. I, I totally agree. And actually, I think you are the one who got me onto voice memos because before that I didn't do, I was like, this is such a weird feature on your, your Instagram app. And now I do it with everybody. If it's like more than a <laughs> sentence or two and I, I don't want to type it, I'm like, screw it. I'm just going to voice memo. Same. I now can't, it's actually a problem because I now can't be bothered to type messages that are like <laughs> three sentences long because I'm like, or I could talk to you and then you can yeah. hear my excitement or my like, mm, like voice memos always. <laughs> oh, definitely. Good job, Instagram. Good job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when it comes to personal development, um, what kind of material do you usually uh, read or listen to? 
a mixture. I like to read and to pot, like listen to podcasts. I would say I w- I would love to be able to say I read every single day. And there was a time where I did, and honestly, I fell out of the habit. So I'm trying to get back into it. So right now, I challenge myself to just read like 10 pages of a personal development book a day because I really do like reading. Um, mm-hmm. But life gets busy sometimes. You don't keep up with your habits as much as you wish. Um, so I do go back and forth between reading more. And then listening to podcasts more. And when I'm not doing one, I'm doing the other, if that makes sense. Um, Because podcasts, you can work and listen, whereas reading, it's more like dedicated time. Um, Mm -hmm. But I listen to, I personal development books, books like Atomic Habits, for example, that's like one that I really love. Um, I also really love Dr. Joe Dispenza. So this Mm -hmm. is, um, he is, he's a doctor and he wrote, there's a book called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And Mm -hmm. it's so good because it's all about, the book ends with him like guiding you through how to meditate. Cause I'm also really into manifestation and mindfulness stuff. I do mm-hmm. believe that your thoughts can create your reality. Um, so the book is all about how like we typically live our life on autopilot. Like think mm-hmm. about like waking up in the morning, getting out of bed, going for yourself a glass of water, turning on the coffee pot, brushing your yep. teeth. Like you could do that half asleep because your body and your brain just like knows to go through the motions. And it's mm-hmm. how, and he talks about how, yes, sometimes having those habits built up are really healthy and really great. But a lot of the times it's kind of wild. If you look at your days and realize how many things you do without thinking about it <laughs> and how you're not living your life with intention when you do that. Mm. And if you want to continue to change and grow into the person that you want to become, then you need to change and grow in your days as well. Like you can't, mimic the actions of the day before and expect a different outcome yep so that, I think like isn't that what they say um the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results or something yeah and it's so and we do it so often like we're all like I want to I don't know like I want to start my business this year or I want to whatever it might be start working out every day but we don't take the actions to make those happen and I'm like mm-hmm why do you think waking up, putting on the workout clothes, but not getting on the bike or not doing is going to get you to where you want to go? Like, no, you need to actively change the habits that you're doing. So I just love reading stuff about how like your mind controls your reality because of habits that you fall into and things like that. Very into like neuroscience and stuff. Um, (laughs) They're dense reads. They're very dense Mm -hmm. reads because I'm definitely not a scientist and science is hard for me to understand. Honestly, I'm full on what is it left brain or right brain is more creative left brain oh, I think left brain I yeah think. I'm fully that math mm-hmm. and science was not my subjects in school <laughs> <laughs> um what but, podcast yeah. do you listen to so most often I listen to I like manifestation babe with Catherine Zinkina which is truly like mindfulness focus I really do like her podcast unfortunately she doesn't post super consistently on it so it's not one that I can necessarily rely on always but I I will listen to old episodes again and again mm. because they're really helpful um mm. I also really like um big important conversations by Haley Hoffman Smith oh. she's another manifestation coach person so a lot of the podcasts I listen to are mindful sorry you probably hear my cat <laughs> now he only does this when I'm on zoom calls oh my god that's it he like knows so funny oh I was like oh yeah. little kitty <laughs> yeah little kitty um and then I love James Wedmore he has one called not your business podcast or mind your business podcast and okay. he talks about business but also mindfulness a lot yeah. of the podcasts I listen to are mindfulness focused got it there's um have you listened to the happiness lab podcast once I listened to like one episode for the first time a few days ago actually it's, yeah it's really good um I think she has like really good uh, guests come on from different backgrounds and um I love listening to that I haven't listened to it in a little bit but that was one and then um gosh there was another one. Oh, um how I built this with Roz Roz uh he he actually his podcast was the one that was inspiration for me to start mine is because he, oh cool yeah he interviews a lot of like big fortune 500 company like founders or CEOs or ex-CEOs of big companies like um there was a founder from the beauty skincare company called Tatcha um Mm, Tatcha yeah she I think she's a Asian American and she like her whole journey of building Tatcha and like the fails and like the peaks and Mm -hmm. valleys that she's had it was really inspirational I only remember that one specifically but um I yeah 
that okay i'm gonna have to look into that podcast because i think it is so important as entrepreneurs and like something i've learned especially just starting out every time you have a failure because i've had plenty of them i think any entrepreneur has and they're lying to you if they say they don't yeah. but like <laughs> failures you go through are just as important as the successes and you learn something from all of them i was literally sorry he's joining us i was literally <laughs> um dude I was literally on TikTok yesterday scrolling through and I stumbled across a TikTok and it was about the seven businesses or seven of the businesses the Kardashians have started that end up being total oh. flops. And like oh. everyone, you have your own opinion on the Kardashians. I feel like you either love them or you hate them. Um, I'm indifferent about them. I, I applaud their entrepreneurial mm -hmm. journeys. Um, but it, they go through seven of the businesses that they had that I had never heard about. And <laughs> it's because they were huge major flops. And I'm like, <laughs> But these are some of the like richest people ever and they have plenty of successful businesses. So it just proves that like they learned from those failures and they kept mm -hmm. going. And that's why they have as many successful businesses as they do because they kept going. Like they could have easily taken one of those many flops mm -hmm. and just said, oh, I'm a clearly not cut out for this and quit. Yeah, I did. Okay, wait, what is that on TikTok? Or I, it was a video I found on TikTok. I don't know that I'd ever be able to find it again, but I probably liked it. So I can dig through my likes. But it was like <laughs> Kim, Kim had like a weight loss supplement business. There was oh. uh, at one point there was a makeup line that Kim, Courtney, and Chloe were all in on together called Chroma. Huh. Never heard. I'm big, I'm huge into makeup. I could tell you the most indie brands. Never heard of that brand before. So like oh. they have so many businesses that completely flopped that. They kept going. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna have to find that. I'm sure there's like some kind of BuzzFeed article. I bet. I'm sure. <laughs> I, yeah, if it's the Kardashians, you can find it everywhere. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, for sure. Um. Anyway, I totally sidetracked us. Uh, but <laughs> how did you come up with your brand name? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah. So that's a fun question. So I am a huge daydreamer. So reverie actually means to be in a state of daydream, to be in a state of reverie. Um, it means to daydream. So I'm a huge daydreamer. And originally my business was called Reverie Creative. And the only reason I changed it to Reverie Inspired Co. is because I couldn't buy the real Reverie mm. Creative domain. I had to have Reverie Dash Creative, which I bought. And then I really thought it through and I was like, I don't know, maybe it's not a good idea. I'd rather have something that I could just have like the full domain to. So I was like thinking, 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 and then came up with Reverie Inspired Co. And it's it's called reverie just because I personally live in a constant state of daydream. I'm someone that is always in the future, which I'm not saying is good. I actually <laughs> have to constantly work about, work on being present. It's mm. I'm mindful of it now, but I, it's not, it's super intentional. Like I, it doesn't come naturally, naturally my head's in the future. <laughs> and so that's why I call it reverie. I, it's, I'm constantly a daydreamer. So it's really that simple. Like I, I believe in following your dreams. I don't believe in working a job that you hate every day of your life. Like I, mm -hmm. I'm a person that like, you can come to me with like the wildest dream you have. And to me, nothing is a pipe dream. Like if you want something bad enough, you can find a way to make it happen. And I totally understand that different levels of privilege come into play and all of that. But I don't know. I just believe in going after your dreams. So I I think it um, it shows in the work that you do. And just you. like the fact that you think about all the great successes and things that can come from everyone's business. Um, and you really put that into the work that you, uh, in your website designs, in your branding. And um, yeah, I, I mean, obviously I loved the website you created for me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, what kind of help have you had throughout your journey of this small business trip? So much, honestly, like, I feel like I mean, okay, so I've actually not been in a place where I get to outsource as much that, as I would like to. Um, honestly, you inspire me of that because I think you're so good at knowing like a step ahead, like I got to outsource that. Like I can't put this on my plate and I need to get better at doing that. Um, Cause I'm starting to hit the point in my business where I'm like, I can't keep up with it all and keep my head above water. So mm -hmm. probably gonna start outsourcing stuff soon. It's just, you know, figuring out the logistics of that, of course. But um, help along the way for me. So since it hasn't as much been like, some hiring, oops, sorry, hiring someone to do work for me. It's more like having a support system. Yeah. And that's what's been like big help I've had along the way. Like 
making friends with others in the entrepreneurship community, some who are designers like myself, some who are not designers and have other types of small business like yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, But having a support system of people who understand what I'm going through and dealing with, because I have, I'm lucky and I definitely have the most loving and supportive family and the most loving and supportive friends. But even though they're incredible and they cheer me on, like if I have a major win in my business or a major setback or something like that, like they'll cheer me on and support me or do whatever I need. But going to someone who's also an entrepreneur, it's different. Like they understand it on another level. So I think that's been some of the biggest help that I've had, just creating a community and then finding people to learn from. I'm a strong believer in like, don't have to never, I never want to be the smartest person in any room that I'm in. Cause mm-hmm. I think if you want to continue to grow, you need to continue to learn. So mm-hmm. putting yourself, although I think sometimes it's great to be the expert where you are, I think 90% of the time it's actually great to be a student. So absolutely aligning myself with people to learn from who have done what I want to do, who are where I want to go. Mm-hmm. Always having somebody in your corner who's like one to two steps above where you are in your journey mm-hmm. is huge um and having them kind of in your back pocket really close to you uh because you yeah you never know um you know how they can help or how you can help too right it's a two-way street and even though if they're not like if you're not at that same level they are it's always nice to just kind of banter back and forth with you Mm -hmm. know said person and bounce ideas off because they could learn something too right (laughs) a hundred percent I think the biggest like thing you can do in business is find, find your business friends, find people in the entrepreneurship community, people who are doing what you're doing different from what you're doing, all of the above, because there's, you can always learn something from someone and having Mm -hmm. someone to go to when the days get hard, because Mm -hmm. the hard days will come running a business, Mm -hmm. like is so important. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, In terms of like, when you think about designing when you think about like working with a client can you walk me through just like the process that you have because I know our our process was very personal and I don't know if you know it's the same with other people but I'd love to hear you know that thought process yeah so I'm actually continually shifting things like every time I work with someone I get feedback like one of the questions I ask um and you'll know this too like I send a questionnaire at the end of working together as well saying like would you love, would you not like, like what feedback do you have? And I, I really listen to that and I try to implement and change based off of that. Um, but basically like for me, it always starts with the conversation at first. Cause kind of like what I was saying earlier, like I need to make sure I get along with the person while we're working together for a long time. That's important to me. And then from there, I like to almost like find a friend in the person that I'm working with, because for me to be able to design strategically for someone, I do really need to get to know them. Like You can't just tell me your favorite color is purple and then run away. Like it's definitely a collaborative process. Mm -hmm. Um, So for me, my process is having the branding questionnaire. Well, having the discovery call, I know. (laughs) <laughs> having the branding questionnaire, um, where I ask lots of questions, uh, mm-hmm. what your story is, what emotions do you want to evoke, things like that. And then from there, I'll have my clients put together a mood board because I know that my job as a designer is to come up with a vibe of everything. Even in me getting to know you and who you are as a person, I do think mood boards are really, really helpful for me to just be able to see your own creative opinions because sometimes what, what's really funny to me is sometimes I'll ask a client like, okay, like, do you like script fonts? Do you like serif fonts, sans serif? Like what design vibe do you like? They'll communicate something to me, but when they give me their Pinterest board, it's completely different because (laughs) how they were communicating it was not Mm -hmm. how I was understanding it. And I think it's because communication is amazing, but like, you know, perception is everything. Like someone saying, I love a super modern design. What is modern to them might not be modern to me Mm -hmm. and vice versa. So it's really funny. So I always have my clients put together a mood board if I'm doing like full on branding for them um, of what they love. For you, I didn't need a mood board as much because you already kind of had a website. So I end graphics. So I understood what you were looking for from there. And like we talked through visions and stuff on lots of calls. Mm -hmm. But if I'm doing branding from ground zero, this is a brand new brand. That's one thing that I do. Mm -hmm. Um, So a mood board that kind of shows what they love because especially especially when it comes to logos I find it so helpful Mm. because what's also funny is if I'm doing branding for someone and I'm creating their logo I'll ask them to show me three logos they love and three logos they dislike and 
it's really interesting how the loves and the dislikes are all very similar to another. And it's because maybe they just go really strongly that they don't want script in their logo or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the next part of the process. And then from there, um, I like to do a mixture of calls to go over things I design as well as I use a program called Asana, which I'm still, I'm deciding, I'm still on the fence on if Asana is going to be my forever, honestly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. Um, but I'm also always looking for something even more efficient, transparently. Yeah. But I like to do a mixture of calls as well as just like uh, comments back and forth in Asana for the design process, because I don't want anyone to ever have to be on a call with me every single week to go over things because that's mm -hmm. too overwhelming for everyone involved. Yeah. So I'll normally do calls every couple weeks. Um, every three, four weeks, I would say we end up on a call mm -hmm. to go over things in bulk. But between then I'll put stuff on the Asana board for people to go over. Okay, cool. And when it comes to, I, cause I know like we use Asana a lot to go back and forth. When it comes to wrapping up the project, um, like how do you know that you feel good about it other than the person telling, like, because when I first saw the website, I was like, holy crap this is amazing. Like, how did you put everything together? Um, like, do some clients totally not dig what you're doing? Like, or have you had that um, at all? Okay. I've luckily not had the experience of some of me putting a project together and the client going, I hate it. <laughs> um, cause they'll tell me, cause it's important for me to get feedback along the way. So like I shared pages with you along the way, cause you can tell me like, this is not what I had in mind or yes, yes, yes. Keep going in this direction. And I listen to that feedback that I get along the way to continue designing. So mm -hmm. I know that I'm designing kind of with that same vision in mind. Cause if they love how I did the homepage, cause mm -hmm. that's always the first thing I'll show. Well, if I'm doing branding, the first thing they see, obviously is their like logos and all, but like web design, like mm -hmm. the first thing you saw me design for you was your homepage. And I knew yeah. based off of you liking or hating the homepage, which direction to go. So I just really listen to client feedback and I'll design based off of that. Um, I haven't hunt, run into a client hating any, like hating everything I did. I have, of course, tweaked things for clients before, like I'm, people will give me feedback and I'll tweak based off of that. And I have mm -hmm. had to tweak things. Like yeah. I'm not saying I'm a one hit wonder here at all. Mm -hmm. Like I've definitely tweaked things plenty of times, but mm -hmm. I think for me, the reason I know that I feel good at the end and I know the client is going to like it is because I do spend so much time listening to what they're telling me and talking to them, whether it's on the phone calls, whether it's the communication we have in Asana or really like in the DMs on Instagram, or mm -hmm. I try to, one thing that I've changed and implemented since you and I working together, I do now have most of my client, like boxer community or like mm. always mobile communication and boxer. Mm -hmm. Um, I've kind of did that just to keep things nice and organized like boxers for clients. Instagram is for like fun conversation. Yeah. Um, so that's like a new thing that I use, but I keep the conversation going. Also, I don't only talk to my clients about the project. Like That's I true. talk, yeah. Like if you, can you, like, I don't know if you remember how many conversations we had about <laughs> everything. Like, I don't yeah. even know if I can necessarily retell the conversations, but because like we would talk about everything. We talked about traveling. I told you I was going to live in your suitcase when you went to Hawaii for like a week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like we talked about food, we talked about packing food and bringing it home after yeah. our family trips home. So like, I think the reason I feel confident that my clients will like what I design for them is because I ask them questions that have nothing to do with the project too. And it's because I'm genuinely trying to get to know them as a human, not as just a business owner. That's awesome. I totally remember a lot of our conversations. It was like super, it was actually more random conversations than it was like business ones. But I think to your point, that's really how you get to know a person, like your personality, yeah. like what they like, what they don't like. Yeah. You, you telling me that like, oh, my business sold X and X dollars last month is not going to tell me anything about yeah. what your interests are. It's really the conversations of like, oh my God, you're from Hawaii. Oh my God. Um, your favorite food is bacon. Oh, like those <laughs> are the things that like I pick up on and like, did I put a piece of bacon on your website? No. <laughs> but it's conversations like that, that help me get to know someone so that I can design more for their personality and for them as a human. Not oh, definitely. like, and like, I want to know what your business dreams are. I want to know where you want to go with your business one day. Like, that's all important to me too. But like, it's the human connection conversation that propels it, me. Oh, definitely. I remember we had talked about like, I'm from Hawaii and I love mm -hmm. water and beaches and you actually created like wave type of graphics mm -hmm. in the website and so it's like little things like that 
that what you know a client may not understand or right. get why you did it I guess but to the business owner it's those little things that really add up to make it a very personal website yeah it's all the subconscious things and like if anyone looks at your website right now like the waves they might not even know exactly what we're talking about with the waves but like there's graphics that I made just wave shapes not like ocean waves but like the shape of a wave and it's all like I think it's all like the subliminal like subconscious hints towards mm -hmm. the person that just make it feel so personal oh definitely um have you ever turned down a client like after your initial call? I have. Um, I have. It's something that I'm also working on. Like I think 99% of entrepreneurship is self-development. I wish mm -hmm. someone would have told me that before I got started. Not that I wouldn't <laughs> do it, but like I had no idea how much I would have to work on myself to make my business work. Uh, yep. Disclaimer to anyone. <laughs> um, so the reason I mentioned that though is like, I'm constantly doing self-development work with myself and learning what my boundaries are and what I'm okay with doing and what I'm not okay with doing, how I'm okay with being spoken to and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and I have turned down clients before because I just realized like this person's expectations versus what is actually going to be done, I just know aren't aligning. And it's not that I couldn't achieve what they wanted. It's just, they weren't coming down to earth and realizing like, mm -hmm. I can't build a whole website in 48 hours. That was yeah. almost literally the ask. Like <laughs> um, some people can, some people can. I'm just not there yet. And I know my line of like, I have to say no to this. Yeah. Wow. That's a really quick turnover time. <laughs> Super quick turnaround. So I have absolutely turned down clients before. And the way I do it, I just say like, I'm sorry, I don't have the bandwidth to, to do it right now. Yeah. Which and is true. That is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, as you're developing your business, is there anything like super exciting on the horizon that you're in the works of? <laughs> always I'm always wanting to design new things I have um I'm very multi-passionate as I mentioned earlier so like I feel like I'm constantly doing a million things um within my branding and web design business I am I launched templates um three weeks ago now four weeks ago yeah. now um I launched my template shop so I am still getting in the groove of having that I really want to put a lot more focus on my template shop moving forward I have new templates coming out um that I'm working on still um one from yours actually like similarly like so new on the horizon not so much new just like increased focus on the templates which I guess are new to me and then like my long-term dream is one day I want to have my own makeup line which I know has oh. literally nothing to do with branding and web design but that's one of my pipe dreams so I'm, I'm speaking it into existence by saying that out loud more and like, will it come true? I don't know, but we're going to try. So just like showing up, I've always shown up as myself, but showing up even more so as myself on my social media is like, I'm not, if anyone comes to my, um, like follows me on TikTok or anything like that, like, I'm not just talking about web design all the time. I'm definitely talking mm -hmm. about the other things that inspire me, like makeup and travel and mindfulness. So yeah. new for me is just getting used to allowing myself to follow all of my passions without feeling scattered about doing so oh my gosh when you launch your your makeup brand I'm so gonna be there <laughs> I'll hey I'll let you know I don't this might be 10 years in the future I have no idea but it's somehow it's gonna happen <laughs> I love that I know you're so passionate about it and to your point of not only putting like your product or services out on social media but showing like who you are and your personality and your other passions um I love your makeup videos you're so creative thank you Thank you. Thank you. And that's the thing at the end of the day, I just want to create, I want to create. And I urge everyone to do that. Like, I really believe, I feel like I sound like a broken record sometimes, but like people buy from people. So if you show mm -hmm. who you are, like on your website, I was like, send me five fun facts about you that has nothing to do with live long and plant. And you were like, what, like about why I started this. And I was like, no, like literally random stuff. And those are my favorite things to put on people's websites because they make you human. They do. Yeah, because not uh, to your point. Yeah, people buy from people. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, when you asked me that, I was like, why? That has nothing to do with my product. And you're like, yeah, well, people want to know who That's you the are. Point. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'm not going to feature that on your homepage or anything. I'm not going to like make that your header. Like it's your, your products are definitely primary and not secondary, mm -hmm. but like people buy from people and like the amount I get, I uh, answer me this when you post stories with ginger in it. <laughs> do you get more, do you get more responses to that than you do like oh, yeah. talking about same? I yeah. get more responses when I post these goobers in my stories <laughs> and it's just because people want to know who you are. We're nosy. We're all nosy. <laughs> oh yeah. 
for sure. I mean, I think that's why I watched the Real Housewives series because I'm like super nosy. People. Same. Like, what Same. They do? <laughs> um, I know we talked a lot already about like tips and tricks and like advice. Is there a piece of advice that you would give someone who's like in the grind? I feel like that's maybe not one we've covered versus like a new person starting out. Yeah. Um, I mean, lots of advice. So I guess one thing that I've had to really learn while doing this is to not be scared to just do it and to realize, and maybe this isn't a problem for other people. I have definitely worked through and I'm still working through like the fear of being seen because although I really want to grow my platform more and like reach more people and work with more people and just connect with more humans. Like there is definitely a fear there that I'm still working through on what happens and what bad stuff happens once I do see, like I had, okay. I had a one video on Instagram go viral or viral for my account. I have literally less than a thousand followers, which is totally fine. But I had one video get like 470,000 views. And I had a moment where I was like, holy shit, 470,000 people have just seen my face. That kind of (laughs) freaks me out a little bit because there's, with that comes the trolls naturally. Mm -hmm. So um, what I've really had to learn and what I'm still working on, if you're in the grind of it and you feel like you're just throwing stuff at the wall, throwing stuff at the wall and throwing stuff at the wall and like, you're just, you're nervous about what people are going to think. Like no one who's ahead of where you, ahead of you, like a step or two ahead of you, or has been where you're trying to go will ever turn back and look at you and judge you and what you're doing. The Mm -hmm. haters and the people who are going to put you down and question you are the people who are behind you and can't even imagine taking the path that you're taking. Mm -hmm. So don't let their, don't let their words and don't let their thoughts be any weight on you because you're already Mm -hmm. ahead of them. And two, like if it's not someone who you would want to trade places with, like if someone who gives you (laughs) advice, if you, if you look at their life and you wouldn't trade places with them, then don't take their advice. Oh, I like that. It shouldn't hold any weight to you because their advice is coming from what has gotten them to where they are now. And that's not bad. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their own journey. Everyone has their own dreams, but like only take advice from the people who you would actually trade places with in life. That's very true. Yeah. There's, I would say like 95% of the people that I meet, I don't know if I want to trade places with them. I think they're great human beings, but Right. Yeah, I would only take yeah. uh, like 5% of, I think it's that 80, 20 rule, right? Like 20% yeah. makes up 80% of your life. And so um, really just focusing and honing in on those. Yeah, absolutely. And being careful. And like the other side of it too, is I'm not saying like cut people out of your life that aren't where you want to be. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not someone who cuts a lot of people out of my life. I have, of course we all have, but for the most part, I'm not going to cut someone out just because they're not doing what I want to do. Like, no, yeah. we're all different, but Like if there's someone in your life that you would go to for relationship advice because they have an incredibly successful relationship, but they have like 10 failed businesses, maybe don't take the business advice from them, but Mm -hmm. seek their relationship advice. Like it's okay for someone to not be everything for you. It's true. Totally true. Yeah. Yeah, We all have our strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. (laughs) So, Um, yeah, I love that. I'm sorry. Were you going to say something? I was gonna say that's so that's my piece of advice don't let don't let other don't let the fear of being seen or other people's judgment stop you from going forward and doing something because at the end of the day oh this is another good one that I actually recently heard someone say on TikTok and I'm like (laughs) I don't remember the creator I would credit them um but at the end of the day the people that you should be making proud is the eight-year-old version of yourself and the 80-year-old version of yourself so when you're making decisions think about that would the eight-year-old version of yourself be like oh my god I'm so like I can't believe you're doing that that's so cool and will the 80 year old 80 year old version of yourself look back at you and go I'm so happy we made that decision because I feel like I've lived a full life I love that oh my god yeah. I think that we all need to kind of have that mentality of like absolutely at when you die or whatever you know like when you're when you go to sleep at night are you happy with the choices you've made are you yeah. proud are you not like we all need to do some self-evaluation absolutely 100 percent. yeah um I know we're we're coming to time but um I always ask everyone um because I say awesome sauce a lot as you know <laughs> um what's like there's a lot probably that you've had but what's an awesome sauce moment that you've had while running this business it can be any awesome sauce Ooh. um 
So I've definitely had plenty. I think one really cool moment for me was actually closer to the beginning of my business. Um, well, in the beginning of like taking this, not taking it full time, but taking it really seriously. Cause I went full time April of 2021 is when I like really quit my job and mm-hmm. did this full time. But of course nothing's overnight. I was building this for months prior. I've been doing it on the side for years. Um, but in about, I think it was maybe in February of 2021, Mm -hmm. Um, I had someone who I went to high school with who like have not kept up with this person. She's a wonderful, beautiful human. We just, she was two years older than me, I believe. So we were on, um, I did color guard in high school. I was band nerd. Um, (laughs) and she, we were on the same team together and, um, but she was like two years older than me. We like got along, but it's not Mm -hmm. like we like have necessarily kept in touch since she graduated. And then I graduated, I left Louisiana, as you can see, um, Mm -hmm. But in about February, she randomly DM'd me on Instagram because she's always been really supportive of me and saying like, I would keep up with her on socials. Mm-hmm. Not that we would DM, but just like liking pictures. Yeah. Um, she reached out to me and said, it's been so incredible and so amazing and so inspirational seeing you build your own business and just go for what you want. Like, I would love to get on a call. And like, she's like, I have something that I've been wanting to do. And like, I just, I want to, I want to do it. And like, you're making me want to go for it. So, and I ended up starting to build her website for her. And so that was an awesome, awesome sauce moment for me. Like realizing like all of this stuff that I'm posting Mm -hmm. is actually being seen and, and it's actually making an impact on people because whether or not she continues to go on in her business or if she doesn't, or, and, and anyone just knowing that, like, I'm getting, I'm inspiring someone to follow the life that they want to live. That's, that's the most fulfilling thing to me. That's amazing. I, I love hearing stories like that. And it's, it's really inspirational. And to your point, to know that it's actually making an impact out there and touching people's yeah. lives. It's, it's totally worth it. It's so cool. And like, <laughs> I hope to reach more. Yeah. How about you? I would actually love to know the same for you. Oh, gosh, I've never been <laughs> asked this. Um, <laughs> honestly, I think it's more so just the interactions I get in DMs of like other small business owners asking for advice or asking, you know, um, like, how did you do this? Or, you know, can you connect me to this person? And because I love connecting people and I love helping other people. I think we have similar mindsets in that way. Um, And yeah, just being able to know that you can impact one person's life, you know, every day um, is really enjoyable to me. And I think those are my awesome sauce moments. (laughs) <laughs> I love that yeah so we're, I, we're the same in that I, it's just so cool it really it is. is I love it thank you for asking that I appreciate it yeah <laughs> um well I know we're about to wrap up is there anything that you have um coming up or anything you want to make people know about um just connect with me as I like said throughout this whole thing like I love human connection so whether you need a website or whether you need a brand whether you literally just want a friend whether you're obsessed with makeup mindfulness <laughs> literally any and all above have cats as well like um <laughs> connect with me you can find me on Instagram or TikTok or Clubhouse and my website is reverieinspiredco.com um but my inst- my like social handles are I am Brooksy Smith so I love it. connect with me I'd love to just chat and get to know you Yes, everyone, please connect with Brooke. She is a wonderful human being. And again, thank you, Brooke, for being on the podcast today, the Plant Your Friends podcast. I'm so thankful for you. And I, I'm really excited to see how your business grows, you and your business grow in the future. Thank you. And same for me to you. I, you're doing your website was so much fun for me and it challenged <laughs> me creatively in really fun ways to like take, like, it was just so fun. So I'm really excited to see the continued growth of Live Long and Plant as well. Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks everyone for listening in and um, we'll chat again in a bit. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Elise. Okay. Before Wait, you me... hang up. <laughs> uh, let me.